Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA's RTX 50 series of graphics cards powered, of course, by the Blackwell architecture is shaping up to be absolutely monstrous with massive increases in performance and also VRAM capacity and a much wider memory bus. We're going to be tackling that in this video and also some very intriguing details of another NVIDIA product. This is an AI PC SOC that the company are allegedly developing and, well... I think you'll agree that it has some very interesting use cases. We're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So the basic uh, configuration for the RTX 50 series of cards seems to be that GB202 does feature 192 SM and there have been many reports from myself as well as Coppertite 7 Kimmy and others online as well that we will see a 512-bit bus. But interestingly, a very well-known leaker on the Chinese website Chip Hell, their name is Panzalide, has basically given us a couple of additional details to, to the layout of the PCB for the Founders Edition model. Now, using the translator, they said, um, and this is, by the way, machine translated, so let's just say the wording is a little off, but we'll get into what it means in just a moment. The memory layout is very dense. The FE uses free PCBs to leave space for double-sided blowing. The 30 and 40 dovetails are single-sided blowing. You know what I mean. Because the bit width is increased, the PCB cannot hold the memory lying down and the stagger blowout like PG651 is not used, so the, so the full blowing method of PG137 is not inherited." End quote. So what this most likely means is basically the PCB of the RTX 1590 is going to be noticeably denser than what we have with, let's say, the RTX 1490. It would imply that we have 16 memory chips here to give us the 512-bit memory bus, and this would almost certainly imply that we're looking at at least 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory for the 5090, which is obviously noticeably more than the 24 gigabytes for the, let's say, RTX 4090. I will leave it to your imagination what the pricing for this thing is going to be, but, um, well, I don't think it's going to be cheap. Uh, also, as a note, WCCF Tech have basically got a couple of mock-ups of what this might look like, but ultimately this is some guesswork. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have uh, photos of the card itself, and it is worth noting that NVIDIA does tend to make a lot of prototypes with their cards, so it's going to be very difficult to get an exact one-for-one one of whether that's going to end up being the retail model. I will be absolutely fascinated to see how these things perform. Now, again, the full accompaniment of uh, SMs for the GB202 uh, chip is 192, but of course we can expect those to be cut down for the RTX um, 5090. I've heard somewhere in the high 160s to, you know, 170-ish range, but again, these are speculative figures until that we have, until it gets closer to launch, excuse me, it's going to be very hard to pin down. Hopefully we'll get better leaks pretty soon. I will be very interested, honestly, to see what NVIDIA's strategy is and their marketing surrounding the RTX 5090, because obviously the pricing is going to be pretty key. With, let's say, the RTX 3090, if we go back a couple of generations, uh, the RTX 3090 was never marketed towards gamers exactly. It was more like for content professionals. And the RTX uh, 3080, meanwhile, of course, that was the card that, well, most gamers were looking to purchase. And obviously, you only had 10 gigabytes of RAM with that. Uh, there was also the 3080 Ti 12 gigabyte, but... 
that came later. I can't remember how much later, but I believe it was several months later. Someone can um, put a note in the comments. But basically, for the launch anyway, it's going to be very interesting to see what the strategies are for NVIDIA. And I suspect that the 5080 is going to be faster than the 4090. That's what the rumors are. And frankly speaking, it just makes logical sense. But um, I will also be curious to see whether they release like a, a 5080 Ti a launch. I haven't heard anything about that, but just because there isn't a rumor about it, it doesn't mean that NVIDIA won't do it. As for performance, I've personally heard figures of around 50 to 70 percent faster than the previous generation. Um, however, those are most likely raster figures, and whether they end up to be indicative of the average game performance is quite difficult to know. It's also quite possible that those are benchmarks which are actually compute. So again, it's going to be very interesting to see how much faster this generation is compared from one to the other. Let me know in the comments below, guys, are you going to purchase the RTX 5090? What's your absolute price limit for this? And also, if you are interested, which generation of cards are you coming from? It seems that on average, people wait a couple of generations, of course, to upgrade. So for example, if you had like a 1080 Ti, you may well have skipped the 20 series and maybe gone to the 3080. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. So a day or two ago, there was a rumor that was floating around um, that basically Nvidia as well as Dell were basically hinting that uh, Nvidia are going to be producing a SOC of some description, which is going to be for the AI PC market. Now, I don't need to tell you guys that at this point, AI seems to be in everything. And quite frankly, I think just the acronym AI is starting to just kind of bug me because it really does seem to be like it just is being incorporated in stuff that, quite frankly, I just don't want it to be implemented in. Like, sometimes I just want a dumb tool. You know, I don't want AI to, like, try to help me with something, but I don't want to go on a whole rant. So I'm going to just pause that right there. Anyway, uh, now there are multiple reports that are floating around online that this does seem to be the case. XPEA um, on Twitter has basically provided additional confirmation. So according to their information, this is going to be comprised of an ARM-based uh, Blackhawk CPU, a Blackwell RTX GPU, as well as LPDDR6 memory. Now, this is going to be all on the same package. Now, basically, when you're talking about memory and a bunch of other stuff that's all thrown onto the same SOC, this is not new. It's not like NVIDIA are super innovative here in terms of packaging. We've seen this kind of thing from, let's say, Apple quite often. And Obviously, even company, uh, sorry, even uh, Intel recently are getting into it with their next generation of processors and so on and so forth. So, again, it's nothing super like innovative, but it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this comes together. Now, the rumor is that TSMC will be leveraging its free NM process for this, and I'm sure you can already start to think of many ways that Nvidia could start to expand their product portfolio. Now, obviously, when we're talking about lightweight you know, laptops and that type of thing. There are a lot of ways going forward. We've seen all of the announcements from Microsoft and their Surface stuff and stuff from their partners. And obviously Windows for ARM is a whole thing in and of itself. And that's quite a large topic. But it's going to be very interesting to see what NVIDIA ends up doing in the next couple of years going forward with laptops and other stuff. Now, again, I'm not one of those doomers who's saying that x86 is dead because obviously that's not going to be quite the case. And we're looking at some very interesting architectures from AMD as well as Intel going forward as well. Zen 5, Zen 6, for example, looking very impressive. And the same thing could be said for Arrow Lake and subsequent Intel architectures as well. With that said, there are also a lot of scenarios where, for example, what NVIDIA and other companies are doing here make a lot of sense in, not least of which handheld gaming devices. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, Nintendo um, basically have a Maxwell-based uh, kind of sock in the uh, original Switch, and the rumor is, of course, that we're going to see NVIDIA once again provide the IPs for the next generation Switch, whatever that ends up being called. But yeah, the Steam Deck and a lot of these portable systems are also extremely popular right now. And it's very hard to imagine that NVIDIA doesn't want a piece of that pie, especially if it starts to get expanded and tweaked and innovated upon. 
Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys. I'm very curious. With that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.